And we're live. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm James Wesley. I'm Seth Budetsky. This is Stars in the House. I'm wearing this shirt for a reason. You'll know in a minute. Yeah, I, I'm not dressed up to outdo him. He's, he, is, he is wearing that. Yeah, reason. symbolic. Go. Okay, so Stars in the House, we started it a week ago tonight. No, no two, two weeks, weeks ago. Oh, my God, tonight. It's a twice a day show that we do for the Actors Fund, which we always say is a misnomer, which is an SAT word, which means that it's misnamed. Basically, it's not just for actors, it's for anybody in the entertainment in, field. Any professional in entertainment, in the in the performing arts, anywhere in the country. If you're in need if you're if you're in need of help for medical reasons, for rent, for utilities, for food, the actors fund is there for you. And we're not just talking about actors, we're talking about people behind the scenes. We're talking about your local professional ballet, symphony, opera. Any any of those professional arts. Box office, that's right. makeup people, script supervisors, key grips, anyone that needs help, and a lot of people do. And here's the deal. Actors Fund gives help to everybody in the entertainment world across the country, but they they need to give out more money than ever. They have less money than ever because all their main events, right. fundraising, have been canceled. Their big gala honoring Matthew Broderick and Sarah Jessica Parker had to be canceled. Their ragtime concert, which was completely sold out, I think it's going to be canceled. They basically have no money coming in and they need to give out a lot. And that's right. why we're doing this twice a day. And people give donations. I mean, it's amazing. People yeah. give five, ten, twenty-five dollars from around the world. And since two weeks ago, by the way, we have no corporate anybody, but just these little donations we're getting from people. No, by the way, we'll take corporate money. Oh, we want them. <laughs> we we don't have. If you want to sponsor a night, we have had a few people do a matching thing. You know, where yeah. they match whatever's been raised in a particular night or afternoon. Um, and these are just a few that are left over from the afternoon show. And that's, we want to thank Barbara from New York who gave $20, Robert from Massachusetts who gave $25 to the Actors Fund, and Daniel from New York, $100. And it has added up to that we've raised over $120,000. Into the lack in the of drama. Weeks. In the last two weeks, we've raised more than $120,000. But isn't that thrilling? It just sounds like you're saying it louder. No, this is, we've raised $120,000 <laughs> two weeks. It's just so, there's no. P.T. Barnum. I see Carol Kane laughing. Well, because it's just it. like, it's so thrown away. Oh my away. gosh, we get it. Okay, we have to tell everyone what we think, what we know is big news, and it was exciting. Um, beginning tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Yeah. on channel 106, volume on Sirius XM, they are really helping us tremendously promoting the show without commercials, um, and it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern, and it's basically going to be the previous day show. So this one with the reunion of Taxi is going to be the very first show that's going to be uh, broadcast on Sirius XM. And what's the channel? It's Vine. Channel 106. Channel 106, 9 a.m. Eastern. So thank you, right. Sirius XM. No commercial or anything. They're just really doing it to help out and to just make more people know about it. What else we got? You to know say? what? You want to do like that right there? Oh, yeah. Right? Okay, so here's the deal. So we're joking. We got like our hair cut. Our kid just graduated cosmetology school. So she did we're, our We're hair. fortunate that we have a live-in, uh, you know, someone who can do our hair and stuff. So people are like, people are looking crazy, but everyone's like their beards. So she made this video, her name is Julie Wesley, it's our kid, and she made this video, and I'll tell you where it is, but here's a sampling, how to give someone a haircut at home, and it's this so detailed. This is like a short version, then you can go to her Instagram. Go to her Instagram, but look how great this is, because I know you guys are cooped up and your hair's looking crazy, I've been seeing you. <laughs> Yeah, isn't that cool? So he literally gives you all the instructions. That's her Instagram. And so there's a just, longer version of it on there. And it tells you how to do it. So and, and people keep saying how to do a man's haircut. So she's gonna show how to do a man's haircut on right. James's mother because her hair is short. Well, and my so, hair, she just cut my hair two weeks ago, so it's a little bit too short. Yeah, we're not gonna use him. We're gonna use Elizabeth, of course, because she yeah. has a man's haircut. Right. It's all good. We're uh, gender bending. Okay, hold on. So I wanted to read a letter, Seth, because we've gotten a lot, and I just, I'll pick one here. Here's, you can write letters here. That's right. Um, or you can go to our website, starsinthehouse.com. Yeah. Um, Seth and James, this is from Barry from New Jersey. I just donated $250 to Actors Fund online in your honor. I wanted to share with you how much joy uh, your show has delivered to me the last few days as I bench your shows. My son is positive with COVID-19, and I self-quarantined starting last week. I have, have developed some symptoms myself, so like many others, I'm home alone with a lot of time. Thanks for the education. Thank you, Dr. LaPook. 
entertainment. Thank you to all of our friends who joined us. And just good warm, you, your team. Yes, we could not do this. We have a whole team of friends that are just volunteering. That's right. And like not fun volunteering, like logging the shows and like, I mean, it's kind we of- would have done, We would have done one show and that would have been it. We would have done one show and we would have been divorced. So thank you to our whole team that's helping. Keep that's going. True. We're already like this close, by the way. Well, anyway. <laughs> we, gotta you gotta, we gotta save the joke for people. Oh yeah, we basically apartment. said we're Lucy and Desi. Because we, we had an apartment in the city, Carol's been there, and um, and we have a house out in the country. And now that's where we are. Remember the last season? They were all happy in their country house, and then as soon as they But ended, it wasn't they, just the last season, it was like the last season of the regular show, and then it went to the hour-long series yes. for three seasons, and it was like you knew, watching it in reruns, that the last episode, they got divorced the next episode. So that's what we joke about. Now we're doing, we're doing this here in the country, and if this goes on a lot of longer. smiling on camera and literally <laughs> this ring as soon as the show's over on that note i think we need to bring in dr john McClure. yes okay what about here's that? our chief not that he's our therapist but sometimes he is all right so our chief medical correspondent from cbs and the chief medical correspondent from literally stars in the house. House. Com. that's right for your questions and anything you want to talk about the amazing dr john McClure. hey guys happy uh, this is monday night how are you it is Monday night. It's hard to keep track. It's very hard. I, I, I have a question for you. Inquiring minds want to know, as you guys are teasing about each other, how did you meet? Oh, please. We don't need to talk about that. We <laughs> met at a game night. We actually met at a singles game night. So I love games. We were playing games, and uh, there were single people there. And at the end of it, we got email lists of everyone who was there, and I basically asked out everybody. And the one person who responded, no, not really. But I asked out everybody. <laughs> But also I was doing these uh, Rosie O'Donnell cruises for gay dads and their kids. And I knew he had a, a daughter. So I was like, you should Julie come on was it. six years old. Yeah, yes. he just adopted Julie. So I was like, Julie should come on it. And the next thing I know, I had a daughter. Anyway, That's keep true. going. Any medical- what Was it like lightning in a bottle? What was it, what was it like? Well, basically, I just broken off a long relationship, and I was like, "This is my year to finally." It's been ten years. I'm like, "This is my year to have a ten, a full year and, of craziness." And I figured there was no way I was gonna. Who would want to be dating a guy who has a six year old daughter? You know. So, so he I was over it. That. I just figured nothing was gonna happen. I was ready for a year of wildness, and by literally our second date, I was like, "We're gonna get married." I literally knew we we're gonna get married, and there went all my chances for like a year of being a whore. And that was that was December twenty six, two thousand and six. We'll ask Mary Lou what day that was. It couldn't, have been, it couldn't have been the second date. It had to be the first laugh. Because Aww. there's no way to resist that laugh. Well, I mean, as a kid, right? Well, that is true. It was it was a joke that he made, and I laughed. You are right. That is yeah, funny. that is actually what connected us. Very good. It's funny. Focus on the medicine. Okay, so what what is the latest update? Yeah, what do we need updates. to know? Go. Um, so if everybody needs to understand that. Uh, the numbers are still not exactly real. You know, we're still trying to get our arms around a 24 hour uh, turnaround so that when you see these numbers going up, what exactly are they reflecting? Is it a pent up test that have been done over the last week and now they're suddenly being added? Uh, but it's very clear that it's not just in these hot spots. It's moving out. These, this virus is very contagious. Um, and it's, you know, it's eventually going to be in most places and people shouldn't have this false sense of security because they're in some small town so everybody's got to do what we're saying it over and over and over again really do it the social distancing at least six feet wash your hands for 20 seconds cough into your arm um but there is some excitement going on and this morning we did a segment on cbs this morning uh about the very first uh, attempt to give their two very sick people with covid who are in houston the serum, so antibodies from the blood, taken from the blood of somebody who had recovered from COVID-19. And the idea, it's as, it's as old as uh, even the 19th century, but in, in the 1918 flu pandemic, uh, it was used, it's been used over in, you know, during MERS and SARS and this and that, but it's never really had a huge study to say, we're gonna take a control population, we're gonna take a treatment population. So. Oh, at first it's just gets really okay. It was okay by the FDA last Tuesday for the sickest patients. Um, and then, I, you know, oh, you're gonna see these different studies where people try it at various stages of people getting ill. After all, when you start a new treatment, usually it's the very sickest patients. You may not see the best results initially, so don't be disappointed, folks, about that if it happens. Because uh, it's only, you know, there's only five people, and now I think there's twice that number in China they're reporting on, but or, or a higher number than that. But we still haven't had the real study. But um, it'll be interesting to see what happens as time goes by. Is it helpful earlier in the, in the disease, middle, late? Who can get it? 
And then there's this antibody test, which is going to be a game changer, which is not to tell you whether you're sick right now. It's not looking for active virus. It's to say whether you were infected. Do you have some immunity? Do you have some uh, antibodies? Remember the measles, mumps, and rubella test that every, almost everybody gets to see if you're immune? The similar thing, you get the results in a couple of hours and know, oh, that cough that I had a week ago or a, a month ago, that the sniffles, I thought it was allergies, I thought it was a cold. If it turns out it's COVID, you may very well be protected and able to then go back to the front line. So uh, that's what's really hot right now. There's also a bunch of, um, they're going to be trying trials now of the hydroxychloroquine and Zithromax. And, oh, you know what we haven't said about that? There's been, a mis there, there's been an underreporting of this. There is a potentially serious side effect of hydroxychloroquine. That's the malaria medicine, which is, without getting too technical, it's called QT elongation. Basically, it can give you an irregular heartbeat. And if it's combined with another medicine that also does the same thing, it can be a double whammy. And Zithromax, a Zithromax, which is going to Z-pack, the medicine in the z -pack, that can do it. So we have to be very careful when we're giving these medicines. Every medicine that can help also has a, a, a potential side effect. So that's why we need to do the controlled studies, uh, not just sort of willy-nilly being prescribing it without being careful. And if you can, you want to follow the electrocardiogram. But when somebody's home and you know, you can't bring them into the office. Fortunately, there are these devices now. You can do home EKGs with your iPhone. There are various products. Talk to your clinician about that. There's a way to look at that. Oh. So okay. basically, it's going to be spreading everywhere. So if you think you're in a safe place, you're not. Just make sure you wash your hands. Basically, everyone should just stay home for the next few weeks if they can. Am I correct? Yes, and 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 perhaps a little longer. And I, you know, I've been thinking about that again. I'm not trying to sugarcoat this. But what are the silver linings here? Um, and if everybody really starts to pay attention to personal hygiene, we may see foodborne illnesses go down, which are related to washing hands and washing the fruit and vegetables and stuff like that, doing proper food preparation. We, I'm fascinated. I spoke to the dean of the Harvard School of Public Health. They're looking at whether flu is going down. Is, is this a better flu season because people are social distancing? Wow. Uh, and then, of course, the whole that whole getting together thing you know, <laughs> where we're physically separated, but we have to stay emotionally connected. And you're seeing a lot of, on the Upper West Side of New York at seven o'clock, clapping, it brings, you know, it, it, it's amazing. It brings a tear to your eye, you know, to hear everybody chat, you know, shouting for, not just doctors and nurses, clinicians, first responders, the people who are delivering your food still, everybody is still out there. So there's a lot of where it's good that's coming from. All right, Dr. Boo, we're going to bring you on at the end. Of course, say goodbye. If you have any questions, email us or put them in the comments. We That's love right. having you here. It just relaxes everybody that I know. You're such a relaxing presence. So thank you, Dr. Boo. Peace out. James, I just want to make sure that you know, because I know you're going to be doing stuff here, that yes. if you want to go up and down, it's this. Okay, okay. we've got a whole elaborate opening here. Yeah, so what, we're, we're trying to, to bring tribute to, uh, to a show that won the Emmy for Best Comedy Series not once, not twice, but three years in a row, and if I remember correctly, and I know that someone will tell me, maybe Mary Lou, it won 18 Emmy Awards total. Mary Lou will tell you exactly what night it won the <laughs> Emmy right. Award, what, what she was wearing, <laughs> what they served to the after party. I can't. I see her nodding. So, but we've, we've got a whole intro here that I'm going to see if I can do the technical stuff. So, Seth? Okay, so this is going to bring back a lot of memories, people. I just printed it out. Here we go. All right, Judd Hirsch, be ready. This is your taxi reunion. Mind you, we're all chitter chatterers. If you speak at the same time as someone else, no sound comes out. So basically, you have to just nod in recognition of someone speaking and then speak. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. Okay, so Hi. many questions. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mary Lou, for organizing this. Yeah. Talk for a second about how Mary Lou did this. 
What well, your we, comfort TV idea? Oh yeah, so you know, I see how, shit. How are we? How are we coping with all this? Oh, wow. in so many different ways. And I thought for most of us, there's like the whole idea of comfort TV, right? That we want to go with what's familiar, where we feel safe, we feel comfortable. And I thought, well, what about the classic TV show? Taxi. And we know Mary Lou because she interviewed us several years ago, right? When we did What the World Needs Now is Love and she was so lovely. So we, Mary Lou, we help us and she did and she got all of you together. So thrilling to see you guys. <laughs> okay, we have a million questions. There are a thousand fans online. I got to start with the most just sort of generic. Yeah. How did you guys get the gig? Let me first ask Danny DeVito. By the way, Danny DeVito, we saw you honored by the Actress Fund. That night was incredible. Ooh, how'd you get the gig, Danny? Okay, well, uh, Joel Thurm is a casting director that we all know that uh, was casting this show. And uh, uh, he had sent me out on other things like uh, over the years, acting, uh, you know, auditions. And he said, you got to do this. this. This is a great part. You got to check this out. And I read it and I thought it was really funny. I thought it was really good. And I went to meet Ed and, and Stan and... Dave Davis and Jim Brooks and and I went into Ed's office and I had the script in my hand. I really wanted the part, and so I I thought I'd do something a little radical, and I said hello to them. I knew I was going to sit in the hot seat to do my audition, and I said one thing I want to know before I start: who wrote this shit? And I threw it on the table, and uh, that, that was how I got the part. <laughs> Almost right in their room. <laughs> okay, art imitates life. Um, right. What about the brilliant Christopher Lloyd? Hi, Christopher Lloyd. Hi. Are you in your room? Are you in your kitchen? I'm sorry. Are you in your kitchen? Am I in your kitchen? Yes, I, yes. Just all the just past the edge of the kitchen. <laughs> I can well, see the background. <laughs> okay, how did you get the job? How did I get the job? Uh, well, you know, there's a rumor that's been going on since I got the job that the guy up in the right-hand corner here, Danny Lino, had some influence. I have never, we've never spoken about it. We never hashed it out, whether that's true or not. Anyway, going beyond that, I don't know. I don't know how I got the job, but suddenly I was called in one day, and um, uh, I remember I had a friend, John Hackett, who lived up in the Canyon, Canyon. And he said he was cleaning out all his bushes and everything, and he found this jacket with a peace sign. And that, I wore that to the audition, and uh, my father, ex father in law's uh, kind of worn out sneakers kind of fell together like that. Do you can I say something? Oh, can <laughs> I say something? Okay, so it was Go our ahead. first season. Can I say? And it was our eighth episode, and it was called uh, Lock of, It was called Paper Marriage. And uh -huh. Lock of and this hooker, Vivian, were supposed to get married. We had just taken our first two-week break. The show had just gone on the air, and uh, it was our first one back after a break, and right. our two-week break. And so it was, you know, September 22nd, 1978, and Chris came in and played Reverend Jim, and you could just tell him he did one scene, and it was so magical that it was unbelievable. He was supposed to be a friend of Bobby Wheeler's, you know, the character played by Jeff Conaway. Wow. And he came in and it was just so unbelievable. So then the fifth episode of our second season, he took his driver's test and came back and he became a regular. Wow. Was Rita Taggart? The That's how it happened. Rita, Rita Taggart was, yeah, she was Vivian. She, was she wore my old wedding gown and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, well. And if you can remember, there was the fa most famous six words in television history. Yes, in fifth, in five, in the, the fifth, in the driver's test scene, of course. <laughs> Which what one? Yeah. What well, does well, it, well, what, well, what does well, the yellow I, light mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always remember the, the, the great line, though, where he says he's reading what Andy wrote. Chris is reading what Andy wrote, and he says, you will always be a tart to me. <laughs> and he said, part of me. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 How yeah. did you get the gig? You were later on. Wait, I'm, who, Carol, did you? Who's yeah. frozen? I can't tell if she's smiling or she's frozen. She looks Carol, 
There you go. How'd you get it, Carol Kane? How'd you get the part? <laughs> the delays are amazing. Hold oh. on. How did I get removed? Carol, can you hear them? Oh, she has to come back. Sometimes people get frozen and you don't know if they're reacting <laughs> or if they're frozen. Hold on. Wait, she didn't like the question. Do you want Carol Kane? Uh, you can't hear me. I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, how did I get the part? Was uh, I, I think because I had done this movie where I spoke Yiddish uh, called Hester Street, and because I had to speak this foreign language with Andy, mm -hmm. I guess they called me uh, because of that, Jim Brooks, and everybody, and. Um, at the time, I was such an idiot because that was in the days when um, people that did movies didn't do TV. Uh, and I was thinking, oh, well, I mean, this, you know, I shouldn't do TV. But then I saw Jack Guilford do an episode. And I figured if Jack Guilford's going to do it, then I'm going to do it. And, and then uh, from then on, I paid them every week to let me be in. Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. <laughs> and what about Mr. Judd Hirsch or Juddy Hirsch? How'd you get the gig? <laughs> uh, oh, it's it's not a terribly long story, but I I uh, I just come off. Um, I think it was two episodes of Rhoda, and uh, and then I did a play off broad, uh, on Broadway with uh, an only uh, um, a Neil Simon play. So um, I was kind of like back into my. Uh, and the best of what I thought I could do, which would be at plays and maybe movies. So I get this call to say that they're that they've done that they want to do this. They hadn't even I don't think they had written it yet. Um, well, at least they didn't send it to me. And they said, uh, "Would you want to do this part?" And I said to my agent, "I said, well, what for? I mean, uh, I, I was just about to leave for Europe with my kid because I I I, I didn't think that television was really terribly important. Certainly not for me. I, I was just you know kind of like." I was a stage actor. I didn't want to bother going back to that. Uh, so uh, I said, well, well, what is it? Uh, what, what, what is it? They said it's about cab drivers. And I said, oi, this is going to fit so well. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to fit so well. My father was a cab driver. But anyway, and also an electrician. But um, So I said, okay, so why don't I just go see them? So I go to see them at the um, Plaza Hotel. They had the, the deli. I think Danny might have seen the same thing, right? Woo woo. The deli, right? They had all this deli laid out. No, Danny. There, there was no deli. When uh -oh. I Not I with Danny. Deli. What happened to God? I went to the. Uh, Please circle. Yeah. I went to the, uh, the office on, at Paramount on Gower. <laughs> there were a bunch of people. It, 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 they wind and dine, Judd. They wanted it. Where well, is it? Where did it? It was deli food. It's not that impressive, but <laughs> no. But that was like yeah. the Plaza Hotel. You got called for an audition with those guys. That's you know they had deli food because they're Jews and they had champagne because they're rich. <laughs> Amazing, Danny. Did you have any issues with uh, with? With doing TV, I mean, you had done Cuckoo's Nest. With well, no, I I actually like doing it because, uh, you know, I had I did a couple things like I I worked in Del Vecchio once with Judd, the years ago. I really had a good time. I did uh, a policewoman and a Starsky and Hutch, and you know, I didn't have any money, so uh, you know, we're all looking for work. I wasn't like. Uh, you know, oh, 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 hotsy totsy, I'm not going to do uh, television. A few of my friends thought it would be the worst move I ever made mm. doing a taxi, but they were fucking wrong. Can you curse on this thing? I guess so. By the way, Dan, I guess so. I yeah. remember your first, I feel like I remember watching the very first episode when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and you were up in that cage. And then it was that crazy reveal of you walking out. That was well. Judd wanted to go. Yeah. Uh, make up, make up, make up, make up, make up. It was, to the stage. Stage. it was the phone booth. Was the phone? Um, the phone call. Call thing wasn't yeah, working. The phone call. The phone booth was broken. The paper was broken. So everybody was lined up to take 
make a, a phone call. Judd was, you know, uh, they found out that he had a daughter that he hadn't seen in for uh, 15 years. And uh, he calls her in where Peru or Venezuela or somewhere. And, uh, and then he finds out that she's going to college and she has a stopover in Florida. And he, and they all talk him into to borrowing, a, taking a cab down, take the cab down. And I will, you know, they, they yeah, that's the story. Basically, for the yeah. first right. show. Yeah. <laughs> Danny DeVito. I don't know if you guys remember this. Mary. I don't know if you remember, this, but, you? but that was the first time that anyone on television was allowed to say bitch. And that became like a big thing throughout the whole week uh, for Judge to be able to say son of a bitch. And it had never been said on network television before. We have and a very specific question. Christopher Lloyd, this is very theatery. But someone is saying, Christopher Lloyd, I would love to hear about your time at the Neighborhood Playhouse. So, uh, about my time there? It's a question uh, that an audience member wants. Well, I don't know how you, it's kind of like a school. There are courses, you know, morning and night. And uh, But I, I chose to go there because a, a teacher there for some 33 years or something like that was Sandy Meisner. And everybody touted by there, and I thought this was the kind of guy I would like to study with. And all the other acting teachers were protégés and all that. So I show up the first day. Uh, I come in, I have my interview, but then I show up the first day. And he's gone to Universal, I think, to be a casting director. Who? How do you figure? You know, anyway, that's, that's what happened. But I did my two years at the Playhouse. When I came out, I felt I was just as lost as when I went in. Oh. <laughs> so uh, Meisner gave up and he came back to New York and he started uh, some musical theater kind of shit. And I went back to him and he had his professional classes at night when I got into him and he kind of saved my life. Now, he, was, he was fabulous and I, I began to get a sense of direction. That miser technique. Now, Judd Hirsch, you were in the middle of your deli food. I so went off. Yeah, I, okay, all right. I probably had to plug it back in. Oh yeah, great percent. Now listen, I was asking Danny, uh, remember in your audition, did you go to the- um, No. You didn't go to that hotel. No, when you went away, I told him, I said, that was like just, they were wooing you. That was like hotsy totsy at the Plaza Hotel with food and, Probably champagne and everything. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I went auditioned on Gower, uh, you know, on that at, at head office over there. You know, there was so you know, okay. So I got the good treatment. You got the treatment. No, but, you would like, the, the thing is, it was, it's it's almost like saying they knew they knew who I was. They knew what I would like. You know, this Jewish West. <laughs> <laughs> Some deli food. Guy from New York. Give him deli. He'll, he'll take the part. Easy, you know. So when I got there, I said, <laughs> I said, what's the part you, you you want me to play? And they said, oh, come on. You know what we want you to play. I said, no, because I like to do languages. I can't. Can I play uh, the latke part? <laughs> I said, well, how, no, I, I'm afraid we have um, Andy Kaufman. Now, the truth be told, I never really cared for Andy Kaufman's uh, <laughs> His his uh, what is it foreign man you know I thought well that's that's not a language that's dibby dibby da come on I can I can do the whole I can do a language you've never heard of in your life Middle European whatever you wouldn't even be able to look it up in a book well they they kind of laughed and I said well can I play both parts and then they laughed again and said you know have another sandwich so <laughs> okay so he told me what what the what the part was and I went home and I said. And my agent goes, he says, what, well, what do you think? And I said, I think this is probably a three year or more show. Mm, wow. And he said, well, isn't that enough? I said, it's too long. Wow. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm 42 years old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna spend the rest of my middle age in you know, uh, doing this one show. I said, mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna get trapped, really trapped. Wow. So uh, he said, uh, Okay, well then, what do we tell them? I said, make them an offer they can't accept, and they accepted, and so thereby we have yeah. the story. <laughs> wow! 
Wow. But the guy who didn't want to do it. Why? Then, and, the, and by the way, then, then, then I did an audition, not for me, but for Jeff Conaway. We did it. We, we, we tried to get that part, the actor part. And so wow. I said, I'll do it with them, you know, because it was inside a cab and it was about, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we had gone, he had gone to our head or something like that. But anyway, it was, um, we had two black guys and Jeff Conaway. And I said, we, we finally went into, into discussion. I said, well, one of the black guys that say could play my part, he's that good. <laughs> I said, certainly he's not going to be a failing actor. You're never going to believe that. The other one is my old friend, um, uh, Cleveland Little. And, that, and, and for some reason, Cleveland was coming out of a bad time and Maybe. really wasn't a very good auditioner. Maybe. And then we had Jeff Conway. And, I, and they said, what, what about him? And I said, I saw him in Greece. I said, but he was really good in it. You know? <laughs> said, can he be, can he be bad? <laughs> and they said, God, you never know. Okay. So that's, that's, that's how we got Jeff. I auditioned with all of them. And uh, I was very, I was very glad that um, you know we all knew who the 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 uh, people from ABC were, and uh, and we had a really a really uh, you know knockout um, uh, discussion about how everybody was going to fit on the show, and then I walked out of an office I can't remember exactly how, and Mary Lou Hannah was sitting in a chair in the hallway, and um, I said hello and walked past her. From then on, she thought I was the biggest snob that ever walked on top. Okay, can I just make say? Can I say something here? <laughs> that was that was backstage on December the twenty seventh of nineteen seventy seven at Chapter Two. It was not at Taxi <laughs> because I met you July fifth, seventy eight, oh. the first week. <laughs> but you're right. I did think you were the biggest snob. Biggest in the snob. World, but I was so blown away by your performance. But it was backstage at the um, theater. I think it was the Schubert, right? That where you did chapter two. Did you do it at the Schubert? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't. But I know what you mean. It wasn't. Okay. So it was backstage. Tammy, it was, it wasn't at the Schubert. No. Really? Okay. Right. okay. Every single person, every person keeps asking. Please ask them. It's an old chestnut, but everyone wants to know what was your favorite episode. Right. Do you mind answering? Right. I just keep seeing these questions. So, Marilyn, you want to begin? What well, you did it air? What date did you film it? All the details. <laughs> okay. First of all, we always, okay. So, we always, you know, it was like a play and we crafted it all week and they hated to lose anything. So, the episode that we were going to do starting December 17th of 1979, it was right before we were going to go away for Christmas. It's being shot December 21st. It was called Shut It Down. And it was so good that by Tuesday, the run through, they said, we don't want to lose anything. We can't lose anything, but it's too long. So they said, okay, we're going to make it a bigger episode. And if anybody can handle it, they said Danny and Mary Lou could handle it because they'll work overtime, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And so we did shut it down parts one and two, where I go on the date with Danny. And to this day, my favorite scene I've ever done in my entire career is our negotiation scene. I had to wear painful shoes that entire episode because Dan kept getting funnier and funnier and could always crack me up. But that's my favorite episode. Shut it down, parts one and, uh, one and two, shot December 21st, 1979. So, Danny? Yeah, I'm just showing you. This was the, the big move. Waste. Yeah. Right on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday night, we practiced the tango at your house. It was great. We had a great time. That was, yeah, that, that those were my, is that where, um, what, what was the line about at one time during the night, you have to call me stallion? Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That this was, what happened. That I was said, somebody, one of those nuts wrote that was good one. Yeah. I'm, we're walking. I went, okay. Cause he says one, one, one dinner to save one day to save cabbies lives. And I say, okay. It's lunch. We meet at the restaurant. We sit at separate tables. Uh, and, you know, and you said, no, it's dinner. I pick you up. We sit together. And at some point during the evening, you must call me Stallion. And none of this is negotiable. I said, hey, I'm Stallion. And you say, especially Stallion. <laughs> I love that you guys remember so specifically. Christopher Lloyd, what was your favorite episode? Oh, I, well, uh, the one that that was most uh, 
memorable kind of at the very beginning was uh, I just got into the show. I may have done two, three episodes, but it was still a, a, a new and different universe to me. You know, I, you know, I, I, I hadn't been a big, I hadn't been following Taxi uh, while it had been running before. I, you know, so I didn't really, it was just a whole new thing. And we break for Christmas and they gave us the scripts to look at, you know, for the, during the holidays. And it's about, I got a dead horse in my apartment. <laughs> and I, 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 you know, yeah, it's funny now, but at the time I thought, what the fuck? Talk about bad taste. You know what I mean? I just, I couldn't conceive how this could be amusing. But um, I learned. <laughs> All right, what about DeVito? What's your favorite? Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with Mary Lou. It's like was, was that was that was my my I love that one. I also like the the uh well, he burns my apartment down. Like see, so many of them like you know the the uh the superstitious one was fun with oh, yeah. where yes. the yeah with the hat and the dance yeah. and the, Catcher's mask and yeah, yeah there's so many. Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that pain. Uh, well, I think um, when maybe the one where uh, Andy's character locked uh, cheats on me in order to not die. He's in a, a taxi cab in a in a, a snow storm, and in order to warm he cheats on me with his fellow uh cabbie Elise Beasley. Elise Beasley. So great. Beautiful. And uh yeah and then um anyway then um our Benny Schiavelli, our priest, tell, tells us that the only way that we can make the marriage work again is for me to cheat on Lock Go. Mm. And right. um, I'm voting for Tony. <laughs> but uh, that was Judd. And, um, and then I got to say this line that they wrote me peel me like a grape so I can get out of here. <laughs> and I uh, to say that line, I just was thinking, don't let anybody take it, don't let anybody listen to me because they'll take it away. <laughs> it was so great, so much fun. And, all, and everybody was in it and it was so lovely, yeah. And uh, what about best episode of all time, Carol? What about you, Judd Hurst? What's your favorite episode? Well, I have two, but I have actually three because of uh, who I played with and how much fun it was. Um, Chris tells us that um, that I'm going to die, <laughs> and uh, and and then he gives us the uh, the whole story about what how it's going to happen. You know uh, that I will come out in a, gra a green shirt, the catcher's mask, and somebody will just make mistake me for a girl, a woman. It'll be seven o'clock, and all the thing. Danny comes over to tell me that um, he believes him. And he believes that I should really get out of my house or something like that and really save myself. Because Danny is concerned about my life, believe it or not. Okay. So I, I, I try to poop with the whole idea, you know, I'm saying, don't be foolish. This is only, you have to, I'm like the guy who stands up for his fears. So everything happens. I get a call I'm, I'm a, uh, uh, as, a, as a girl. I choke on something, which uh, Chris had told me that would happen. I wear a guy. I started to. I started to become a little bit gregarious, and I and I put on the catcher's mask and the green shirt. I start dancing in front of Danny. He says, "You gotta stop that. <laughs> you really gotta stop it." <laughs> and, I'm right. and of course, at seven o'clock on the dock, the clock rings, and he says, "See, I told you. I told you because uh, Chris had told me some something terrible was going to happen at that time. I was going to be visited by something." Doorbell rings. Oh, at first, at first, nothing happens. So I start slapping Danny, and he said, <laughs> I think you're so, so, you're a boob. And then he said, no, he said, I'm a boob. 
And then all of a sudden, just after that, the doorbell rings and a little girl is standing outside with cookies. There, she's a girl scout. She's got Girl Scout cookies. And, and Danny's standing there thinking, it's got to be the devil. So he starts shouting at the little girl. He said, do you see that? <laughs> Isn't it hideous? The girl gets scared, runs away, door slams. And he said, did you see it, Rieger? Did you see it? <laughs> <laughs> now, before I opened the door, by the way, I tried to open the door and Danny wouldn't let me. Now, between two actors, Danny put all the force he had to try to keep me from opening that door. It was as if we were doing a goddamn improvisation. I was thinking, come on, hey, DeVito, stop this. If I can't open this door, we, we can't go on with the scene. <laughs> and then he didn't give me crap anyway. He was going to do it all the way until I finally was able to pull him. I don't know how I had the supreme. I mean, you know, this guy's a strong man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I finally pulled him away. Now, he's done this a couple of times on this show. I'll tell you another one. The, the other second one I really, really mm -hmm. love was uh, uh, Alex jumps out of an airplane. Uh, oh. And we, we're having a discussion. I, I, I go through a bunch of stuff that I'm daring myself to do. But one of them is to jump out of the airplane. Danny wants to take out an insurance policy on me. So, and Mary Lou is at the table there with all the guys. And um, I come back and I say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump out of an airplane. And and Danny's now going to say, sign it. Sign, sign the insurance card. <laughs> Mary Lou says, you can't do that. And now this really happened. Danny took his hand. And smack Larry Lou, Mary Lou, in the face oh on goodness. camera. The way. <laughs> and then, and that was totally an ad lib. She didn't expect it. Nobody expected it. Danny didn't even expect that. It. It'd be pushed her entire face away. All right. <laughs> and the next, you got to see this. If anybody ever sees this episode, you got to see the look on both their faces. It's like he was saying, like, I I'm sorry, I can't. I I'm sorry, I couldn't do that. And she's going like this. How dare you? <laughs> oh, I don't believe you did it. That's one of the funniest things that I, I that I can remember about the show. And you guys uh, kept that take. That take is the one that's on TV. Oh yeah, that's the one. What no. episode was that, Mary Lou? So many times, uh, so many times we did things that were just spontaneous, and they left them in. Mm. You know, we and it was like the, they were so it, because we were all stage actors and we'd rehearse it all week. Everybody was allowed to like make suggestions and do different things, and yeah. you know they would add it and then they'd shape it, and and things that you did became part of the scene. You know, that, was, that was one of the things we were going to ask you was all being from the stage. When you, how much did the characters evolve from what you first saw, you know, in writing for the pilot or the episodes that you came on, Christopher and Carol? Like, how did it evolve? And how, what what did you bring to what the characters? What did you bring to it? Danny? Well, I think that the, I think everybody will agree that we um, we hadn't any idea what we were in for, but we were blessed with like uh, really good, uh, great writers uh, all the way down the line. And they always supported our characters individually and as a group. So it was it was always I thought always very well balanced and very well. Uh, and and not only that, but they were really dove into each one of our characters with all the idiosyncrasies and everything that made like Alex tick and, you know, everything that made all the characters uh, uh, go, go for it, uh, work. I think they found, they never let us down. Yeah. And I think they found that they, they knew our strengths. They knew when they cast us all, what we really, could do. They really knew what we could do. Yeah. Because they they were ahead of the game. They were really mm -hmm. ahead of the game. When they wanted And they were, you know, and and Tuesdays at 4:30 was our big run through. And you could bring anybody there. It wasn't like a big closed set and Jim Brooks was so open about having people make suggestions. I remember my brother was visiting from Chicago and he had a suggestion and I said, "Oh, blah blah blah." And Jim was like, "Oh, then let's let's put that in. Let's try that." <laughs> Such an open season. But can I just, I want to say two things. First of all, based on what you're saying, first of all, it was extremely generous of Judd, who had done, you know, spearheaded Del Vecchio and had like Tony and blah, blah, blah. And he, you know, Tony, he was like on Broadway. He was so general, even though it was Judd Hirsch in Taxi, it really had mm -hmm. an ensemble feeling because of Judd's generosity. He let us all share, you know, you say, oh, that's a, uh, that's, 
to Danny and Elaine, you know, it's a, a, a Louie and Elaine episode, or Bobby and Tony episode. We really all took turns sort of being the lead. And I also have to say that based on their openness to using our lives, the crazy, crazy Andy Kaufman episode, which was the first week in October of, of our first year, uh, it was all about Danny and his brother negotiating, having a card game for like what's going to happen to their mother. And there was a woman that was brought in and she wasn't as good as Danny bringing in Julia, his mom, who ended playing ended up playing his mother on the show. So <laughs> yeah. everybody, you know, they were it was they were so open to any kind of suggestion or bring it in or make it part of the family or whatever. So that's how you ended up with Julia DeVito is Danny's mom. I love that. Hold on. By the way, this is by the way, this is still a fundraiser. Just so you guys know, yes. you guys being here, I can't tell you how much joy, like just everyone yes. is just commenting. So there's so much joy out there. People being isolated. I'm sorry, there, Dan, you can look at it. Everyone's loving this. And on top of that, they're all donating to the Actors Fund. So we want to just read you a couple donations. Yeah, there's that a few come donations. In. It's just a few that the Actors Fund is sending me. So um, Anthony from New York gave $25. Barbara from Florida, $50. Ken from Connecticut. Gave $100, Jerome from California, $25, and Rodney from Colorado, $100. Thank you all so much for giving me that. Guys. It's a, while this is all happening, so that's really because you guys are here. Okay, so we have a thousand questions. I wrote down so many so many things. So one, oh, of the, one of what? Yeah, gonna, yeah, I would say one of the most fun things, I just love knowing about any mishaps. Okay. Like what went wrong in a set? Mary Lou, did your wig ever fall off? I don't know, something <laughs> I need to know about. Did no, your wig ever no, fall I off? I didn't miss that many lines because I have that weird memory. But I always like oh, I didn't make the gag reel until the fourth season because I went like, oh my gosh, I have to start making more mistakes because it's too much fun. These gag reels are so fabulous and everything. But the it was our we shot an episode. It was our thirteenth episode, and every single thing went wrong. And it was the one where Tony and Dan, uh, Tony and uh, Bobby are dating the same girl, and it's like we couldn't get past a few lines before something crashed. So I just always one, remember that that was our 13th episode and it was a mess. Was that the um, one where- where um, Con, Con, uh, Constance Forslund played the girl. No, I, I was thinking the girl. where, where, where uh, Jeff couldn't think of the line maybe six times over and we said, is it, is it Jeff or is it Memorex? Yeah, right, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> What about you, Danny? Do you remember anything that ever went wrong? Uh, well, we had, we what we laughed a lot. Uh, there was a lot of like you know, uh, you know we we were. Uh, I I remember a couple times just this. So the writing was really so funny, and we we had such a good time. I, I remember a couple times really blowing it, going crazy, where I just couldn't talk, just laughing, laying on the ground, pounding the floor in front of all the of the the audience with a, with a total laughing fit. Especially was the guy with I can't remember his name who was a cabbie and and we all got together to give him uh he was retiring. Remember that guy? And I, there there were a couple of those, and they always had great uh uh supporting characters on the show. And well, look at how many ended up in Cheers or different places. Yeah, you know, we just yeah. Yeah. we actually yeah. worked with Ruth Gordon. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And at the end of the, the show, a uh, big bundle of roses came out. Garson Kane was in the audience. Yeah. Yeah, that was like an Emmy. Yeah. I remember she, uh, he went for what you thought was her, and he, she went there, and then he hugged me instead. It was like a joke. Yeah. But I remember, I remember, do you remember the other jiggle? Because it was called Sugar Mama, and the character's name was Aharon. Uh, it was just, oh, so, uh, Jimmy Burrow said, oh, uh, I want Aron to come over here. And she went, what? And he said, I want Ruth and Aron. And she said, oh, I thought you said Ruth and a hard on. <laughs> <laughs> Family show. Okay, James is a question Ruth for Danny. Danny, I was reading about your, uh, your Saturday Night Live appearance, you know, when you were host and the show had been canceled by ABC. Can you describe that and what happened? Sounds crazy. Well, I'd already, we're already booked up, I guess, doing the Saturday Night Live. And uh, I think that was the year that uh, there were a lot of Emmys. One of the Emmys that year. And we came back at one point, and uh, I guess it was, I can't remember how it happened. Brooks said, 
that we were canceled. And it was just horrendous. And uh, I'd already booked the show. I think this is the way it went. And uh, everybody we decided to ever come on the show uh, with me um, Saturday Night Live. But um, I never forgave uh, ABC for that. Yeah, you blew them up, remember? Yeah. That was your whole, like, open, cold open. You blew them up. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know if that's going to happen. Were we all in New York going to do the show anyway? They flew us in. No, they flew us in. It was May 15, 1982. But they, they <laughs> flew us in, and you said that we had never taken our final bow. So you wanted us um, to all come out and take our we final all bow. Came out and did the thing on yeah. Live. That was Lauren Michaels. Was, yeah, and I remember, yeah. I remember, um, Kind of embarrassing, Danny. One time, I was at the Emmys, and um, I just won the last Emmy. It was 1983, um, and we were canceled. Same time. Mm. So uh, I remember at the end of it. At the end of it, I said something, and I saw Danny's face in the audience because I was looking right at him. I think he was sitting next to Grant Tinker. That's why. Mm. Um, and I said, uh, "And now I'd like to take this thing." And shove it right up alongside the one I won in 1981. <laughs> as soon as I said that, Danny covered his face. He was like, "Oh no, you can't do this." <laughs> well, Fred, you got to admit that there were there were very many moments in various uh, public appearances and things that you just went off the rails. He <laughs> said, I'm "Like, I want to stick this up." I thought you said you did. You say you wanted to. Stick it up the ears. No, no. I think I said, I'll tell you what I said. I said uh, I want to thank I want to thank ABC for for four years of Taxi, and I want to thank uh, uh, NBC for for the last year of Taxi. And then I want to take this thing and shove it right up there alongside the one I won in 1981. <laughs> but hold on, ABC canceled it, and then you did Saturday Night Live talking about being canceled. What the hell? I mean, what happened? Yeah. Well, Grant Tinker saw us, and he liked our camaraderie so much. That he picked us up for another year. You know, was, That's uh, incredible. That uh, what's his name? Um, um, it was the guy who was the head of the studio? Brandon, Brandon Tartikoff. It's right, Brandon Tartikoff was yeah. the yeah. instrumental yeah. in that. But you know, NBC was in the toilet. <clears throat> the, the year we, we, he picked us up, NBC was the lowest network on there, and it, I, I mean lower than it, than you can believe. They were really in the toilet. Hmm. And, and you got to them. And then they took cheers. I remember uh, just a, a tradition, a taxi tradition that took me a, a little bit to uh, get comfortable with, but then it became very comfortable. Is that on Mondays, you know, we'd be there at 10 and read the new script. And then we had a kind of an extended lunch while the writers fiddled with it. And then we come back and do a kind of a run through of the rewrites. And our lunch break by tradition was at the uh, uh, Adobe. Lucy's Al Adobe. Oh, yeah. Lucy's Al Adobe. Oh, yeah. Wherein there were margaritas and other things to consume. <laughs> and then we go back and do the, the reading. Like rats. Oh, we did the reading. I say it was that way. All your minds like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do the script with your top lip sucked yeah. back. Yeah. 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 Do like a run through, a read yeah. through, like on Fridays too. Yeah. Do an Italian that. run through, super fast, or we do it like rat, rat mode. Oh, yeah. How we do yeah. it. Yeah. Hey, look, look, guys, look at this this comment here. Joel Joel. Tart Tartikoff loved taxi, and I was the head of talent in NBC. Oh. So we had nothing to lose by picking up taxi. Wow. That's yeah. Joel. Good Joel Cox, me, Danny. Yeah, he was the man. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> so, Danny, you once mentioned like maybe there would be a movie of taxi. If there was a movie or if there was a reboot, where sure. do you think, where would your characters be now? We could do it right now. We could. So where would you all be? What would you be? Would you have the same gig? What would you be doing? Who would you be married? What would you be doing? I don't know. No, I have no no idea. Same. <laughs> what do we do? What do you want to do? I want to imagine anything together. We could have a good time. Mary, oh, yeah. everybody could play the same character. 
There's no there's no age, age determination about this. But nor, no, no one has any success. Their characters are so thwarted. Do you think anyone would have become a success? Do you think finally, like Mary Lou, would have her art studio? Like, would someone have maybe risen up the ranks? I might have done it for a while and then come back and always kept my foot in hanging out with these guys because I love them so much. You know, I think the basis the basis of the show is that we couldn't get out of the damn cab company. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to change that, it would change the whole idea. Right. I mean, we had to we had to come back as the same schmucks we were. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can I just say one thing about it? Uh, just, I don't know if everybody knows this, but it's something that was we were famous for because at the time it was like the coolest campus of all the studios. We had Happy Days with Vernon and Shirley, Mark and Mindy, Bosom Buddies, Working Stiffs, all these things. But the Taxi Cast, we were the really cool kids on the campus because we had a party every Friday night. Right, every Friday and night. Times a year, we had a huge party in the commissary. <laughs> those, were, those were amazing. I amazing. Food, champagne. Okay. Everything. I have a caterer, everything. And the cast would chip in. We had a caterer and we would have everybody from the from the entire studio would come and hang out with us on Friday nights after our show. And because okay. we had Jimmy Burroughs, he was so fast that everybody knew it was going to be like a fun night starting early. Yeah, we did it. The cast did it. The, the, the studio the didn't do did it. it. Yeah. No, we did it. Yeah. I collected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I have a question for you. It was seven hundred dollars. Let's put it that way. Okay. Every time I have Broadway Broadway stars on, I've been making them recreate songs that they did on Broadway, like see what they actually remember lyric wise. So I thought it'd be interesting to just see if you guys remember anything from your classic films. So I would like to ask Christopher Lloyd, do you happen to remember? I'm gonna read you a line. Do you remember what your next line was? I'll help you out. So you just said, the only power source capable of generating 1.21 gigawatts of electricity is both of lightning. He says, what did you say? And then what do you say next? Ooh, you Could you repeat that? Yeah, you said too fast. Yeah, and that's what I, I just know. told them, Danny. Right. I said, you gotta go slow. Before. So you say, Marty, I'm sorry, but the only power source capable of generating 1.21 gigawatts of electricity is a bolt of lightning. I say, what did you say? <laughs> you the future, right? I don't know. Okay. You're on the right track. <laughs> you say a bolt of lightning. Unfortunately, you never know. Great Scott. <laughs> you know what? Good that, enough. That's that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Close enough. Danny DeVito. Yes. Did you direct War of the Roses? Yes. Okay, good. So someone says nobody who makes pate this good can be all bad. And what did you say as when you were when you played Kathleen Turner? It, it depends on what the pate is made of. And he cocks his head, and then she says, woof. <laughs> and then he says, Benny? Yeah, he has a cracker in his hand with the pate on it. And he goes, Benny? <laughs> yeah. That was written by uh, Michael Leeson, by the way. Bravo. That's amazing. All right, Judd Hirsch. <clears throat> The big climactic scene, one of the most brilliant movies ever, Ordinary People. Let's get into that character. He says, Timothy Hunt says, it doesn't feel good. And you say, it doesn't feel good. <clears throat> oh, um, it's not supposed to? No. You say, it is good. Yeah. Believe me. I don't know what scene it is. It's the very big climax where finally you say it is good, believe me. And I say, how do you know? And you say, because I'm your friend. <laughs> I'm so glad you <laughs> That's one of his favorite movies of all time. You've just made his year. Oh, it's so beautiful. I know, I know. Well, you know, I, that, was a, that was a line that I, that I told Redford would never, he, he never should have. Ne well, I said, you're taking the chance because you're telling psychologists to say to their client, to their, to their patients, that they're your friend and you hug them and whatnot. And I said, 
They'll never buy it. They'll never buy it. He said, I don't care. All I know is that my two kids went through that and they never did it. That's why I wanted to see it happen. And I said, okay. Uh, and by the way, he did it in a circle. He put a camera around the circle, went around and around and around and around. And we did the whole denouement that way and finally came out with that line. Then I was walking toward Paramount one day and he was doing the last scene. He was doing the scene that he had to do in the um, tank when the kid drowns. And I said, hey, how are you? He said, how did it come out? He said, well, I'm doing the last scene today. I'm just shooting today. I said, what about that scene that we had? You know, the one that, 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 that I had with, with, with that, you put the camera around? He said, oh, um, cut it. <laughs> he cut the scene because he said, we already heard everything you said before this. I said, it's the best scene I had in the whole movie. And he said, well, that line is still in, but cut the whole thing. Amazing. I just love that line. Carol Kane, are you there? I can't tell if you're frozen. Hold on. Everyone freezes. Hold on. I'm going to bring her back. I'm going to bring her back. Hi, Carol Kane. Hi. Okay, so Carol Kane, <laughs> it's the early 80s. Sorry, it's the late 70s. The phone rings, and what does the person <laughs> ask you on the other end of the phone? Oh, oh, oh. oh the girl. Oh. Uh, have you checked the children? <laughs> it's so scary. Okay, good. Oh, that's scary. <laughs> and finally, Mary Lou, you spent so many years doing this. Do you remember? Freddie, you'll see. You'll hold me in your arms one day. Uh, no, Freddie, you know, you, you'll hold me in your arms one day, and I will be wearing your lacy lingerie. Keep going. Thinking, um, uh, thinking of you, my heart pounding already. Knowing when you come home, we're bound to go steady. And throw your service pay around like confetti. Freddie, my love. Freddie, my love. 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 You still remember it. Uh, in my show, but yeah. yeah. That's right. Oh, well, whatever. That's why I'm wearing this. Okay, so guys, we can spend another three hours with you. Oh, my God. And this can be gone for a long time. So we're, we want to bring you all back eventually because this was unbelievable. I can't tell you the comments. I wish I could show you them all. There's so much joy out there. Do you have anything final that you're supposed I, to be reading? I, I, I don't know. So right right now. Now. Okay. Oh, there's another. There's some more donations. Just a few here to uh, read that are so nice. Final one. We have so many. Yeah, Vincent from New York, twenty five dollars. Thank you, Jamie from or Jaime from California, twenty five dollars, and Shell from New York, fifty dollars. Shelly, I know that is. Hi, oh, Shelly. Shelly. Okay. Okay, and the final thing is, don't forget. I, I mentioned this before. Judd Hurst, did you find anything? I said, if you have any taxi or ordinary people stuff around the house or anything, anybody, we've been auctioning stuff off. It began with the great Joanna Gleason who found uh, Bernadette right. Peters' staff from Into the Woods. She found it in her house. And that auction on eBay. Everything could be found at wow. com. And that one, actually, the staff for, for the Actors Fund is already, I think, at $2,000 or $2,500. Yeah. Oh, that, the best thing I could find in the house. Yes. Oh. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, can auction up, we can auction up a Zoom call with you. And I think Why not? <laughs> I'm just Why saying. Not? You know, if you want to... I, I do like one on one memory sessions with people, and you can auction off a one on one memory session. That would be me. great. That would be that amazing. Would be you, know, you don't know, Mary Lou Henner is a freak ass that can remember anything in the world. That's great. I think okay. everyone who's watching already knows that. Okay. Stuff. So we're going to put that online. Okay, we're out of time. I'm so thrilled. So it'll, Mary, be like a, it'll be like a quiz. I'll bring up the show. We'll say, we'll say do you remember it? And the person will say, yeah, I do. I said, what year was that? And Mary will give the. The answer. Okay. The year and the year <laughs> of the episode. All right, you guys are all amazing. It was a guys, I love you so much. Danny. Yeah. Thank you. Great hey, you. Great to see you guys. Thank you, everybody. Tune in tomorrow. Stars yeah, in the house. Yeah, tomorrow afternoon, everyone who's watching at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have the cast of Frozen. We have Jonathan Groff, Santino yeah. Montana, Josh Gad. And the actual people that wrote it. And then yeah. tomorrow night. Tomorrow night is This Is Us a reunion. And we've got some people on there who are going to be singing for us. I like, just want to say one final thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Carol Kane, I love you. Chris Lloyd, I love you. Mary Lou Henner, you know I do. Danny, I love you. <laughs> I love you, guys. Oh, great, Amy. Oh, oh, oh. All right.
We love Cassie and Rodney. Let me say goodbye to Dr. LaPook. Dr. LaPook, where are you? We'll take us out here. We'll take us out so we can say goodbye to Dr. LaPook. Hold on. Say goodbye, everybody. Hold on. We have to go. Bye. Bye, guys.